everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host Gary Vaynerchuk and I've decided to go very old school today. No gadgets or gadgets. We do have the bucket because I can't breathe without the Jets bucket. But no signage, nothing. We're just going to go a little old school in respect to Gewürztraminer which is the grape we're doing it today. And why do we need to respect Gewürztraminer in this manner? I really don't know but it's what we're going to do. Gewürztraminer is a very passionate and exciting and aromatically explosive and very interesting uh, white wine. Uh, Treminer uh, started, believe it or not, even though Alsace and Germany get the credit for this grape, it started near a town called Tremino in Italy. And uh, Gewürz Treminer is really a break off of, uh, of Treminer because uh, it likes to mutate. And what's really interesting is that this grape has not been sanctioned official until 1973 or 74, I think 73. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a grape that's very much under the radar. It really runs the vast gamut of being from very sweet to very dry. Uh, it's one that a lot of people are not familiar with and if they are, most random drinking, casual drinking public think that Gewürztraminer are sweet, stinky German wines that aren't that good. So, you know, today we're focusing on a few from Alsace, which is, you know, was Germany, then France, then Germany, and France, a real identity crisis, but it is a French part of the world these days, uh, and does produce some of the best white wines in the world, Rieslings and Gewürztraminer, Gewürztraminer being the second most grown grape in Alsace. Uh, and we have one from New York State, a place where I think it's got a lot of potential. Um, and so I'm excited about this uh, this show and really just curious. I think that a lot of people are really into these wines these days because we in America as a whole have been consuming a lot more Asian and Indian cuisine and these wines have been very uh, moldable and very exciting and, and just exciting and let me say exciting again, exciting to drink with these you know spicy and and high flavor spice oriented foods. So um, I'm excited about Gewürztraminer quite a bit. I'm really looking forward to this tasting and I've never had any of these three wines so that makes uh, it exciting. Again, Gewürz actually, Traminer, actually you know translates to perfume or spicy Traminer. So again, it's it's just a, it's a very interesting uh, grape that I'm very fond of as you can tell. I'm in an interesting mood. Uh, this is the Hugel Him. Uh, 2006 Hugo Helmer uh, Riesling, uh, Gewürztraminer, excuse me, Spotlace, which tends to make you think it's on the sweeter side. 2006 vintage, very young. Um, it's got 33.5 grams residual sugar, so it's it's a little on the on the sweet side. Ooh, look at that. This is almost dessert esque. This might be flat out dessert esque. You know what, Mott? I'm going to get another glass. Mott, keep them busy while I'm gone. Tell them a story. Puppet show? All right, so there we go. A little curveball on WLTV today. This just looks way too much like a dessert wine. I didn't want to start with that and then, you know, just be too sugarified. So let's go right to the next wine. This is the Dr. Frank uh, 2006 Gewürztraminer uh, from Finger Lakes, 12% alcohol content, 24 US dollars, like Darrell Rivas's number of your New York Jets. And this is a pretty pricey New York State uh, wine. Uh, 24 bones is not inexpensive, but I'm excited about trying this wine. Obviously, Dr. Frank has got a big time reputation in the Finger Lakes. Let's see what this wine's got and bring it to the table. Nice light color, nothing too, too crazy. Let's see where it comes through in the aromatic charts on our nose. Getting some really nice uh, almonds coming through. Uh, I get a, a pecan, very nutty on the nose. I'm getting some subtle uh, dried apricots on the nose as well, which is quite pretty. And a very concise and clear pear flavor that I'm enjoying quite a bit. Coming through very nicely. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl. Nice complexity, good richness. It's got a nice character to it. It's very crisp and clean. I can see this wine going extremely well with a lot of Chinese food, Vietnamese food, for example, pops to mind. Um, again, clean but light. A um, little bit shallow in the mid palate, but that's okay. Nice finish, all in all. Um, 24 Bones is pricey for a style of wine of this nature because this is kind of one dimensional and not too outlandishly charismatic.
It is crisp and clean and does have a blue Flintstone, meet the Flintstones, kind of style to it. I like it. It seems a little bit dull for this price point. And I'm gonna score this point 88 points. It's a solid, good old fashioned Gewurz. It doesn't kill me. It doesn't make me wanna go run out and buy toys. Um, but it, it definitely does bring a solid, good old fashioned bottle of white wine to the table. I just think it's overpriced. And for that nature, I'm going to give it a pass with six Zs. That being said, it's still a nice Gewurz Trevener. Let's move on. Uh, Gerard, this is the Gerard Numer 2002 Brunderthal Alsace Grand Cru Gewurz Trevener, 25 US dollars, really nice small producer of Alsatian white wines. Um, Neumeyer is definitely somebody you may want to seek out. Um, just really nice wines from this guy. Let's see what's going on here. Let's give it a whirl. And there you go, I just want to do that. Ah, it's fun, right? Okay, let's give us a little bit of a sniffy sniffy. You can see much more golden in its color. Mark, can you see the difference? It is clearly different. Let's give it a little bit of a sniff. And it's coming through with a lot more aromatics. Let's get into this. Almost like sauterne dessert, like nose coming right at the front, forefront, excuse me. Uh, I'm getting some beautiful golden apple. I'm also getting beautiful mud components, but I'm also getting like a soy cashew conspiracy theory that just came out because I was going, uh, so a, a soy cashew component on this wine. The golden apple is, is ripe. There is a hint of mustard uh, coming through as well in this. Yeah, like a golden mustard. It's very interesting. Actually, you know what? Excuse me. Taking the mustard away, because a little brain fart. This is horseradish at its finest. Clean, good old-fashioned, white horseradish. I like it. Great, great nose. And really, the horseradish is obvious and on point. Barry Horowitz. Look it up. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, this is rocking. Oh, this is good. Little hint of sweetness. There's just enough little sugar. Little mwah. You know, it's just that little piece of eyeshadow on a beautiful face where you don't have to wear a lot of makeup. It gives a little flavor. And your lip gloss, it's nice. Big time confession. My favorite TV show right now, Gossip Girl on the C-Dub. Watch it, it's addiction. And this wine reminds me of that a little bit. It's kind of fun, ridiculous, over the top, yet can't take your eyes off it, can't take my lips off this wine. This wine is completely seductive and beautiful. It's got a gorgeous banana peel flavor profile to it. Mm. Wild flowers, I'm getting some, almost a, baked potato skin aspect on this wine. Very clean though as well. Just beautiful flavors, lots of them. Totally bouncing all over my palate. I'm getting some white cauliflower components. Um, white cauliflower, uh, you know, uh, you know, potato skins. Um, just pretty. What is that freshness? There was this thing that I used to eat at a friend's house when I was little and I played Monopoly with him. His name was Rob Lee. I think he was from some part of Asia. I don't remember where. And his mom made this dessert. It was crushed ice with beans on top of it. But it was like sweet beans. And it had a red bean version and a white bean version. If anybody knows what this is, I'd love to find out. That's exactly what this wine tastes like. You know, incorporating some of the other subtle flavors, but that's the flavor profile that completely rings in my mind, and it really brings me back to owning Broadway and, uh, and uh, Boardwalk. Boardwalk, right, thank you. What did I say, Broadway? Broadway Joe, I love them. Boardwalk and Park Place and dominating. I needed the greens. I was all about the greens. If I could have North Carolina in that whole area, I was on point. That green-yellow combo, that's where it's at, people. Anyway. That's what this wine reminds me of. I'm really liking this wine. It's a little memory lane. It's delicious. It's got a lot of different flavors. I picked up all those different aspects. Then the predominant 
rare dessert that I have no idea what it is. I like this wine a lot. I'm going 92 plus points in this wine and if you're looking for something that's out and out fantastic and a little bit different, clean, crisp, with a little hint of sugar-fied action, this is a wine for you. It's just brilliant. And finally, back to the $12 wine, the Hugo Helmer. Um, Spotless, let's see what's going on here. 12 bones. This smells absolutely nothing like anything besides honey. This smells 1,000%, smell this, 1,000% like honey. Mott, who's, you know, beginning drinker, mm. right? Yeah. Like a billion percent, and not expensive honey, like that no, cheap stuff, no. right? Like, uh -huh. you know, the stuff you buy, like, you know, supermarket brand, it smells, ex wow, right? Like exactly like honey. So weird, it's so amazing. That's amazing in wine, that it picks up these flavors. Let's give it a whirl. Psych! This wine is not even sweet. This is amazing. I thought this wine was, in, based on the color, and like almost like the viscous aspect, and the nose, I thought this was gonna be a very sweet wine, but I've been completely tricked. Um, it's got some hints of sweetness, but even the last one was even sweeter than this wine. It's dry and crisp, and, and, and it tastes like daisies. It tasted exactly like daisies, which is fine and nice and interesting. I almost get a plastic flavor as well. A little action figure action. Maybe that's why you don't see Lionel the Thundercat. Maybe I ate him. That's what this kind of tastes like. Wheel. What the hell was that word? That was weird and wild put together. I want to rewind that and see that. Come on, maybe you can like remix that and make me do it like four times. Interesting. Nice entry level, fun, fun wine. Very clean. I can see myself eating this with lobster bisque is coming to mind. Would be a nice pairing. Now the finish is really kicking that uh, cheap honey flavor. So again, if you're a fan of honey, I think you can really like this. You know, honey-covered dandelions is where I'm going with this wine. Solid, not doing a whole lot for me. One, I'm not a big fan of honey, so that's a big factor. I'm gonna go 87 points in this wine. I think it's good entry-level Alsatian wine and definitely not something you should run away from. Excuse me, is this not Alsatian? I think this could actually be German. Let me real quick. Look, because Spalis. Yes, this is a German wine. <laughs> what a weird day. This is a German uh, um, Riesling. Um, all in all, nice wines, they're just, food friendly, like all these wines make me want to eat lobster. That's all I've just been thinking about the whole time. I'll be very honest with you, I've not been concentrating on the show, as you can tell with the German move, and me thinking it was sweet, and all the other stuff, and I had to run, and the woo woo woo, and you know why? Because I've been focused on lobster. Because when you love lobster like I do, and you find wines like this that match with it perfectly, you just want to leave the show and go do it. And that's what I'm gonna do now. You, a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, I'm gonna eat lobster. Question of the day, do you like lobster?